Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel where in this series we solve um, technical lead code questions I guess technical interview questions in lead code uh, just practicing Python along the way so you can decide you're maybe here for a Python um, kind of like warm-up practice round or maybe you want to learn to yeah to kind of like practice and how to solve uh, these technical interview questions it's up to you now let's pick a question uh, I think I was kind of like scrolling I think destination city sounds interesting let's see what's it about so 1436 destination city you are given the array paths which say list of lists all right where paths i equals um, city a one city b one uh, I sorry not one I so basically for each of those entries or each of those lists within the bigger list we have two cities uh, so where this means there exists exists a direct path going from city A to city B all right return the destination city that is the city without any path outgoing to another city um, I guess sure I mean so far it sounds pretty easy to understand right it is guaranteed that the graph of paths forms a line without any any loop therefore there will be exactly one destination city uh, does that mean that I really need to form the graph though <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about right so let's see example one uh, we also have some constraints to look at, but let's first look at the examples and I'm recording sure so paths London New York New York Lima Lima Sao Paulo Output Sao Paulo Yeah, sounds easy enough. I guess uh, Wouldn't it also be easy to find well, let's see here. I mean the explanation is of course starting from London you go to New York then from New York uh, you go to Lima and then from Lina, Lima to Sao Paulo this also reminds me of a kind of like the same type of programming question that I had to do in Haskell in university uh, it was a bit different in the sense of what we were doing with uh, the whole idea but uh, it's the same idea overall right so it's it's kind of cool to for people who haven't gone through university yet or just like at the beginning of the studies to kind of know um, this kind of relevant at, at least in that sense <laughs> uh, okay let's see an example number two paths b c d b c a right so we can see that we can start with d then b b c c a right Output A explanation. Poss all possible trips are D B C A or B C A or C A or just A. Clearly, the destination city is A. The thing is, you can go through a, an algorithm to find all the paths, but you can also kind of see that city A is a destination, but it is never, uh, you know, it is never a starting point. Like city B is a destination, but this is also it is also a starting point. City C is, is a destination, also a starting point. City D is a starting point, never a destination. And we are looking for the destination city. So it is kind of easy if we map everything from the start to go and find it, right? Like we can basically, I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, we can just, you know, map all the destinations. Once we map them into a list, like basically we can we can make a list that will find all the destinations and now we can just loop again and uh, look if any of those destinations are also uh, origin origins or how did I call them at the beginning starting point and for example in this case we'll get C B A and in the second loop we will discard C we'll discard B right and then we'll, we'll be left with A and this is all I mean you, you can approach this question 
I think in many ways, that's what I'm trying to say. You can kind of go with the general overall approach where you go over all the different paths possible. You can kind of link paths together and just see what's the, the very last element and so forth. But on a logical level, you can actually simplify everything, kind of abstract the whole idea because you know that there will be only one single city that is, that is going to be a destination and never going to be a, a starting point. So it's pretty easy to just find that, right? Uh, constraints, the the length of the hops will be at least one, most 100. The length of uh, each hop is of course two because you only get starting point destination. And uh, the length of city A, city B, what's the length? I don't know. Uh, I guess the, the 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 strings, like the name, the naming, would be uh, at like starting from one to ten, right? Starting from one would be something like this. Ten would be I don't, I don't know some word. And no two cities given inside a hop will be the same. So we can kind of kind of helps us not to think about if we find something like this, and it will also be. Uh, its own starting point. So we can actually work the way I planned it and discard everything that is also found in, found in the starting points because our destination will never be found as a starting point. All strings consist of lowercase and uppercase English letters and the space character. All right. I mean, that's, that's also good to know, but we actually map them according to the whole string, like according to the whole name of the destination. So it will be or, or the starting point. So it will be always, however it was written the first time. Um, yeah. So let's have our destinations. Will be an empty list. We can have it. Yeah, I think, I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it as a list. We can also have it differently, I guess, but uh, I think a list is fine. And uh, starting points would also be an empty list, right? So now we do exactly what how we how we kind of imagined it for hop in paths, right? And of course you can have it as um, I think I, I saw it today. Uh, can we have something like let's quickly check that what I'm thinking about is for example, we have paths it will be like a B, right? And then we have B, C. Um, could we, for example, for a start destination in paths, print start destination? So basically, do we get uh, to, to, to choose how our iterator loops over? Yeah, we can. That is pretty nice. So we can basically have for start, destination, in paths. And what we can do is actually uh, now do the whole operation of looking for destination and paths. Basically, huh? Uh, I'm also thinking about, couldn't we just slice things? Maybe, uh, but right now I'm not really thinking about it so much in detail, but you could theoretically have the whole list sliced through the middle, saved in, into arrays and basically do what, what we're going to do anyway right now. And you can kind of avoid this looping here, but I think yeah, it's a bit more, it's kind of the same. <laughs> so at least we can actually see what's happening here. So we, we start with uh, looking through paths. We have start destination, right? So uh, we say destinations append. Well, let's start with starting points append start destinations append destination right and we'll just move those to be kind of like to match the whole flow and at the end we would basically have two two lists one would have all the um, all the destinations that we found and one would have all the starting points what we want to see is our destinations 
uh, minus everything that was also found in starting point. So for example, in this case, we would have like we would have um, starting points would be B, right? B and C. And for destinations, we would have C, B and A. Now, the way I said it is we are looking at it from the perspective of destination because, for example, you see that D is also a starting point, but we don't really care about it. We actually want to see it from the perspective of um, of destination list. So if we do destination uh, complement start, it will basically look at everything that's in destination, and then we'll, it will look at everything that's uh, in start. And if it finds something in start that is also in destination, it will exclude it from destination. And at the end, we only get what's left in destination. So it will see that B, for example, it will look at C, it will find it. So it will exclude it from destination. It will look at B, it will find it, it will exclude it from destination. It will look at A, it will not find it, it will put it as a result. And since there is nothing left else, like there is nothing le uh, else left in destination, we are done. And again, we get exactly what we wanted, right? So how do we do this? Well, you can do uh, the, the set operations, which is this uh, complement operation, but you need uh, to convert the lists to sets. So basically we can do set uh, of destinations minus set of starting points. And this should return us, return us exactly what we wanted as a, a set. I mean, set a list, it's basically kind of the same. Um, let's see, what do we have here? It's not valid value for the expected return type string. Oh, I see. Um, of course, they want a single a single element uh, as a result. So I guess returning it like that should work. Uh, not subscriptable. Let's make it a list. I mean, you should probably just unpack it, but I guess I'll just convert it to a list. Maybe we can Google that quickly. So yeah, what we did here was just convert the lists so we can do our set operation because you cannot really do that on lists and you have to loop by yourself. I don't think it's better. And then uh, convert it back to a list so we can actually get the first element. Or let's see how um, set get elements um, pop no. I guess you have to make an iter iterator. You can make a list. How we did it? I don't like that. Uh, somebody is doing some comparison. And I guess the for loop and some random sample. <laughs> and which one is this one? The green one, the list index. Okay, uh, for loop. I guess for E in S break return E. <laughs> okay, I g it's kind of weird. Can we just unpack it? Pop. Wouldn't the pop? be good no it's not oh wow oh no i'm sorry the time yeah we actually were looking for the for those ones <laughs> so we want something that doesn't uh, get affected by time so we can do something like pop add and we just pop what we're popping nothing we add e what <laughs> that's so weird uh let, let's let's quickly check it. Um, return. Well, we have our set. It would be it would contain a single value. As the pop. Can we do this? Why not? Right. Let's do it then. No lists. And. 
hopefully it will work syntactically like that and it does um, we can test some other case I guess something like this I'll actually test both the, the cases that were presented we know that we shouldn't really uh, run into empty lists so we shouldn't really be worried about our, lo our looping here and in theory there should be no issues like with this operation we know that the destination array will always contain one unique element that we can actually look for so we should be done and that's why i'm assuming that this uh, problem got such a bigger like su such a high uh, acceptance rate because it was kind of it's kind of easy i guess because you can solve it in many different ways uh we did pretty well like i said you shouldn't really look at those but i'm kind of happy that it was pretty pretty compact and yeah um for me what i learned here was doing this operation um basically unpacking a list inside of a iterator and i think it is very useful because you can actually read everything that was happening here in kind of like humor humor readable text so that was pretty neat for me i hope you also you guys learned something and yeah, I'll see you next time. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you like this type of content, uh, consider subscribing, I guess. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.